Hey all you physicists, welcome to the next lesson in the Modern Physics playlist and today we will be talking about the Compton scattering or the Compton effect. And basically what this proves is once again that light behaves as particles because this was actually done um, by Compton and this was done after Einstein's photoelectric effect. And what it proved was because after Einstein published his theory on the res of his results on the photoelectric effect that particles behave as I mean that light behaves as particles, the scientific community was still a bit skeptical about accepting Einstein's viewpoints that light behaves as particles. So Compton came along and proved once and for all that Einstein was right, that Max Planck was right, that quantum theory was right, that light behaves as particles. And this was what the experiment did. So before uh, Compton came along and before quantum mechanics and f modern physics, um, the classical physicists once again thought that light behaves as waves. So let me write what they thought was. So according to the classical um, wave theory of light, wave theory of light or the classical theory of electromagnetism of light. Um, the Compton effect, the scattering of light was explained by um, the Thompson effect and we should probably explain what the scattering effect was. So let's imagine um, a photon represented by gamma and you know since the wave theory light should behave as a wave so let's draw the wave out Let's imagine this is the wave, okay? Let's imagine this is the wave. And imagine this is all the same wavelength. Ignore this little discrepancy here. Imagine this is the, the wavelength, okay? So imagine this is the light and it bangs into an electron. Just a random electron flowing free in space, just not moving, just sitting there at rest. Okay, so what happens when light, according to experiments, what happened was that the electron got scattered and the light itself, the photon itself, got scattered, right? So the electron ended up somewhere here afterwards and I'll dot it to know that it's afterwards and then the wave, the light afterwards would be like that. Oops, I can't do that. And I'll represent this by gamma prime and the wavelength is lambda prime and we know that we can see that the wave oh whoa, this isn't the wavelength what am i doing this isn't the wavelength the wavelength is only this much from here to about here so this is the wavelength so pardon me on that error um the wavelength is only is this much but it still shows that the wavelength after is longer than the wavelength before. And let me write it down here. The wavelength after, which which is lambda prime, is greater than the wavelength before, which is lambda. And you know, scientists wanted to explain why this was so, and they tried using the classical wave theory of light, and they did a pretty good explanation of this, you know, by their standards. And um, this was explained through um, Thomson scattering. Thomson scattering and what this said was that light um, there was some sort of a um, a field that light gave off so an electromagnetic field electromagnetic field and so the electron is in some sort of field and due to that field and um, any charged particle in that field would get accelerated because you know there is some sort of electricity in there so the electron will get accelerated in this direction. So this will result in the electron being accelerated. And that explains why the electron moved. But how about the increase in wavelength? Well, okay, so the, the physicist was smart again and said, you know, because, you know, um, the electron got scattered, it must have lost some energy or whatever. Okay, not energy, sorry. There, um, there was some, like, Doppler shift in the wavelength, and I'm sure all of you guys know what Doppler shift is, Doppler effect, you know, the thing, you know, the when when a race car goes by, the sound. Yeah, I'm just going to stop sounding retarded here and move on. So due to that, um, due to that uh, acceleration and all that, and some sort of recall, and I'll not get into why this was so, um, 
there was a Doppler shift. Doppler shift in wavelength. Wavelength. And this explains the wavelength, why the wavelength got longer. And you know, this was good and all and explained the phenomenon, but except for one crucial fact. It did not explain, uh, it did not hold for lights of low intensities. It did not hold for lights of, of low intensities. It did not hold for lights of low intensities. And because the thing is, since the lights of low intensities were, um, were of low intensities at li little power, um, the effect that this um, theory would, would, would um, predict would be the effect would be too small to explain the scattering, so it didn't really work. So physicists were confused and needed some sort of other explanation. So Compton came along and proposed that Einstein was right and that light behaves as particles. So this was done by Compton. I'm going to use a yellow Compton scattering. So this is basically modern physics, Compton scattering, and what he said was that the um, the scattering was caused by photons. So let's let's redraw the the experiment and say that it's actually a photon here. The photon hits an electron, and the electron gets bounced off somewhere into space, and the uh, photon gets bounced off, and Something like that. So Compton said that light behaves as photons. And we can see that this looks similar to your normal collision experiments. So just imagine that we have two two marble balls and one, one marble ball is traveling towards a stationary marble ball and they bounce off each other. So this is basically what Compton was saying, that light behaves as a particle and the particle just bounces off the um, electron. And due to this, since light behaves as a particle, they, uh, the loss of conservation of, of momentum and energy, energy should hold. But what is the energy of photon, which we discussed in the last episode? The energy of a photon, energy of photon equals HF. Okay. But how, but how does this exactly explain these change in the wavelength? Okay. So let's imagine that the, the energy of the photon before is HF and the energy of the photon after, which we represent as E prime, equals hf prime okay because h is a constant so it never changes but f can change so f prime so we know that, that due to the conservation of, of, of momentum and energy that because of the of the collision um, some energy should be lost through the collision so the energy of the energy before has to be more than the energy after because there was some energy lost and let's sub in the values for each of them. So HF must be greater than HF prime. And since H are both the same, we can cancel them out. And what, we, what do we get? F before is greater than F after. And we can rearrange this and, uh, and, we, can, and we can see that lambda is lambda before is less than lambda after. Through some, some little rearrangements that, we, that we're gonna do. And it, I guess I should probably explain how this works. Okay, so since f, we know that the universal wave equation is f equals, um, oh, whoops, uh, the speed of light equals to the lambda times frequency. So frequency equals to c over lambda. So we would know that we can sub it in here. We can see that um, c over lambda e is greater than c over lambda prime. And we know that since C and C are all the same, we can cancel this out and bring this up, bring this over, and we should change the direction of signs. And what do we get? We get lambda is less than lambda prime. Okay, so that's just a quick uh, derivation of how that works. If some of you don't understand how, the, how, how I got this. And this explains the top part over here because the the wavelength of the light after is greater than the wavelength of the light before. And blah, and ta-da! Wavelength after is greater than wavelength before. So, according to Maxwell, I mean, sorry, Maxwell. According to Compton, Compton, um, according to Compton's explanation, the experiment should hold and it works out perfectly. And Compton went further, and he even explained. Um, he even uh, described the relationship between um, the shift in the wavelength of the lights 
and the scattering angle. And what a scattering angle is, is the angle between um, the horizontal line, let's say this photon, the initial photon is traveling on the horizontal line, that the difference between the angle between that horizontal line and the final path of the photon after is theta, and that we did scattering angle. So what he said was that lambda after, the wavelength after minus the wavelength before equals to h over the mass of an electron times the speed of light multiplied by 1 minus cos theta. And this equation um, explains the relationship between uh, the shift in wavelength and the scattering angle. So we can see that if we use the particle theory of light, we would exp the, the phenomenon of the scattering of photons works perfectly. And this is a great um, improvement on the Thomson scattering which only explains for certain lights of certain intensities, not for all lights. So once again we can see that the particle nature of light prevails over the wave theory of light. And Einstein was right, and Max Planck was right, and quantum theory was right because Compton proved it through his, um, his postulate that light behaves as particles. So hopefully you can see how um, light behaves particles over the past few episodes. And I think this is where we will stop um, explaining about how light behaves as particles. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that this is enough proof already that light behaves as particles. And actually, if you like to see um, how this equation um, right here, this equation right here, um, is derived, I'll probably create a new video and I'll link it through this video. And for those of you who are keen enough to and once you know how this equation is derived, just click on the link below. And until next time, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace out.